Like, this is really in bed. <laughs> this is getting in bed with Chris. This is in bed. questions from human beings on the internet okay. but I have a lot of questions yesterday I was doing some research and I was like wow this is this person is really you really have done a lot of things she's so nice about me you have been out as an actor since essentially day one an article that was in the New York Times in 2008 yeah that's no fucking joke right that's no joke it's 2016 now it's still a big deal to come out um, as somebody in the public eye as an actor who is you know attempting to get roles when this New York Times article came out I had you know been cast in Fringe and we've been filming for a few months so my manager who is a gay man said you know they've, they've contacted me and they would love to include you in this article how do you feel about it because this was the biggest um, role that I had had really mm -hmm. and so my name would be you know out amongst people who were on the internet right and did I want to be known as a queer woman and I was like yeah absolutely like this is just how I'm living like <laughs> I've, I've already been here like I told my mom and my dad and my brothers and that to me was my coming out like who yeah you know, who who else was I supposed to come out to to make this legitimate? This is already who I am. Like, all this other stuff came after. There's always this question, you know, I think for celebrities in particular about coming out and how long did you wait to come out and stuff. And I just feel like there's so much gray area there. And also, it's such a double standard because straight people certainly don't have press conferences to say, Hello, I am a woman and I'm dating a man and I just wanted right. everybody to know and I feel really excited and happy about this decision that I made and I hope you all support me and continue to be enthusiastic about my career. Like, they don't do that. The fact that you didn't really even have to think about it. The fact that you were like, this is me and I'm going to be me and like the acting stuff came after right. who I was. Right. Um, I feel is really special and really powerful. And you know, I think as I get a little bit teary, um, I think that probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that I had a pretty decent support system when I came out and like not everybody has that. I get it. You know, like I get it and I understand that it's not always safe to come out. Mm -hmm. And so the people that, you know, might be queer or whatever and have not come out, there are reasons for that. And I hate it when people, you know, were like, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, you know, we need more visibility. We certainly do, but we don't need to shame people into, you know, providing that visibility for us as a community. And not everybody's in a place where they can do that safely and comfortably. It's like waterworks over here. I know. Do you need tissues? No. What are you talking about? I'm fine. I'm just moist in the eyes. It's allergy. <laughs> but um, I had questions for myself when I was in high school, for mm -hmm. sure. I had written a comic about it that's on my website, actually, that really? you can see. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I'll put the link to that comic <laughs> yeah. below. I had this conversation with myself where I kind of asked myself, do you think there's a possibility that you like girls in like a way that most girls don't like girls? <laughs> <laughs> and I said to myself, yes. That is a big possibility, but that is not something that you can do right now because you are a brown girl who lives in Birmingham, Alabama, and I had no idea how to navigate those identities. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, then you're not going to do that. Years later, I um, had filmed Take the Lead, which is my first film that I'd ever done. I actually <clears throat> just saw, I think you did a throwback recently. I did, yes. You know, Antonio, Antonio Banderas. Banderas. It's so weird. Filming this in Toronto, I'd gone into this boutique to shop, and there was a girl there, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> what are you about? <laughs> and she had long hair, and she dressed in, like, a more masculine presenting way, but she had this long hair, and I was like, I've never, <laughs> I've never seen this before. Right. I don't understand what this is. Because, again, I had grown up in Birmingham, Alabama, and you just don't, there, I don't know what it's like now, but when I was growing right. up, there aren't a whole lot of people that are, like, pushing the gender binary and how they, you know, present themselves or identify. And I thought she was flirting with me, but I couldn't tell because mm -hmm. I'd never flirted with a girl before. And that's another <laughs> thing is, like, you know, when you're with a girl, sometimes you're like, oh, you're so beautiful and you're so pretty. Right. And that can mean so many different 
thing. Totally. We had exchanged numbers and talked about like hanging out and I was like, I don't know if it's like friend hanging out or like more than friend hanging out. Right. But I knew that I was excited if yeah. it was more than friends hanging out. So that was and a that was click. A, that was a click, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Nothing ever happened with us. Like we hung out a couple of times, and we were Facebook friends. Where for a are long. you, Toronto? Wait, where were you, Toronto? It was Toronto. Are you Toronto? Girl? I know where she is. She's fine. Okay. <laughs> so with that, film ended, and I flew back to New York, and I literally went on MySpace and started looking up like queer women in Brooklyn. Like immediately, I yeah. even got a friend to start looking for me. I was like, "Tell me if you find anybody that looks cute or interesting or fun." I like called my mom the day before I had my first date with a girl. And I was like, mom, I'm going on a date with a girl. <laughs> so heads up. And she was like, great. That's so exciting. Wow. Wonderful. I did not tell my dad immediately. And when I did tell my dad, he was totally weird about it. And it was not good. He didn't talk to me for months. Wow. And when I tell you what a big deal this is, like we would text all the time. Just, yeah. I love you so much and I'm thinking of you today. That oh. was the relationship we had. And so we basically had to go to this big family event and I told my mom, I was like, you need to talk to dad. And I had been dating Claire for a few months at that time and she was going to be coming to this event and I was like, he can't come if this is going to be a problem because she's going to be there and I'm going to be there. Right. And she was like, well, your dad says he's still coming. And I was like, okay, we're going to see how this wedding goes. <laughs> we're staying on the same floor of this hotel and I hadn't seen him in like seven or eight months or heard from him and he we hear this knock on our hotel door I was like oh my god it's my dad and like there's all these feelings like I haven't seen you in months and yeah, or talked to you or talk to you and he came in and he went up to Claire and he shook her hand and he was really nervous to like look her in the eyes mm -hmm. and he was like nice to meet you and he hugged me and you know it was a little bit awkward obviously and then like from then on it just was was better and better and better to the point where he said to me one time, he said, you know, I will never, ever forgive myself for having a reaction. And he said something like, it was seven months and eight days <laughs> that I didn't talk to you and I will always regret that. And I'm so sorry that I wasn't, you know, in a better place yeah. where I could. And so that whole story is just to say, you know, I understand what it's like to not have support and to have support and for whatever reason you know all the things in my life kind of made it in a way where I felt comfortable and excited about being who I was there's just so much about being queer that's hard and awesome <laughs> can I give you a hug now yeah. I usually hug people at the end I just want to hug you you can hug so um, Morgan wants to know, um, Hi, Morgan. <laughs> what is your favorite Welcome to Night Vale moment? I mean, I guess I'll say my favorite moment was when they called and said, will you play this voice on our show? I didn't know a whole lot about Night Vale and I knew about the general premise of it. And to see where I am now, I have a coat closet that I use as my recording studio. You do your recordings in your, look at you. She's just tucking herself in. It's just comfy. You record at your house in your coat closet? I do. So my legs are asleep within like 15 minutes. So I was concerned about you being able to sit in bed with me oh, no. for this interview, but turns oh, out. No. Turns out. You've been training for this your whole life. Tasha asks, how does Jessica feel about playing pretty fleshed out roles where the fact that they are lesbian is treated almost as a non-issue as seen in Alice Isn't Dead? So the true wrecker in Alice Isn't Dead, she has not defined her own sexuality at any point thus far. And I don't know if she ever will. You just know that she has a wife. Mm -hmm. So I feel pretty confident in placing her in the queer category. Totally. When you don't have a lot of diverse stories in media, you don't have the privilege of saying, oh, we see that all the time. Or we see that all the time. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, I do. So I feel like there are a lot of times where there might be a queer character or a lesbian character, and her whole story is about her being a lesbian. Like, that's her storyline, mm -hmm. is her sexuality. And that can be frustrating because I don't wake up every day and be like, I'm queer. You don't? <laughs> what should I have for breakfast? Because I do. <laughs> queer people, uh, trans people, uh, differently abled people, people of color, we have to find ways to relate to characters in the media that aren't exactly like us 
all the time. <laughs> so we see these, you know, heterosexual relationships and we're able to to see the similarities of the relationships that we have. I think it's really important for people who are not in a you know, minority role in the world to be able to see themselves in characters that aren't like them. I thought it would be really fun if we could play a game where I'll give you some emotions. Okay. And you can, you can do them. Be an, I'll act them. You will act them. Do you, are you into this game? I'm ready. Okay. Surprised. How about angry? You're at a really important business lunch and this person is in the middle of this, a story. They're telling you a story and you just realized that your parking meter expired. Okay, so normally we give some advice okay. at the end of the show okay. um, for the people at home. Paige, Paige and everyone else in the world has asked, just Paige, but I know that many of you are gonna have this question. I like this girl, but she's straight. I can't mm. stop thinking about her. What should I do? She's mm. told me before the idea of being with a girl would be kind of freaky for her. I don't know what to do. I can't get her out of my mind. I think it's hard to not want what you can't have. Mm -hmm. for, for me, anyway. Absolutely. That's like a hard... It's like sometimes I think I want a cookie, and then I find out we don't have cookies in the house. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then nothing <laughs> will be okay until I have a cookie. There's something about it being just out of reach that I think heightens feelings to a place where they're not even real. And I'm not saying that your feelings aren't real. They are, but I think that the level to which you are feeling them is like way the fuck up here when probably... Yeah. Probably if she liked you back, you guys would make out a couple times. Decide and you'd be like, whatever. Right. Yeah, and your feelings for this person, like you said, they're totally valid. It's okay to have crushes on people like that. Maybe you can try and start perhaps broadening your friend circle into maybe people that are a little bit more queer than this person that <laughs> this you much like. More queer. <laughs> and see see what it feels like, you know, if people start being interested in you and mm -hmm. kind of start giving you attention and you can kind of think about your relationship to those people versus your relationship to this girl. And don't compare those feelings to what you think you might be feeling yeah. with this other person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a trap totally. too. We're like, well, it's really fun to watch a movie with you, but if I was with her. Yeah, totally. No, no, no. I did that for years and years and years, had crushes on people that didn't like me back and totally. once you know I kind of hit a certain age where I was like that's exhausting <laughs> and unsatisfying mm -hmm. and I want to like be with somebody who thinks I'm amazing yeah and I want to think that they're amazing and once that happened it was like oh you can't ever go back <laughs> like it feels too good it's to much better it, it feels is. much better than than the longing totally it totally does wishing. absolutely so I think really what you're saying and I agree is is you need to take some space from this person yeah and if you can in that space, fill it with people who may also um, be queer or be gay or what have you, yeah. so that you might get to feel that um, reciprocity, yeah. if you will. And if you do that, and then this girl is like, we don't hang out enough no. anymore, you stay away. No. Because oh. that's the game. <laughs> That is that a shit. bad game. This is me off. And I have been on the wrong end of that <laughs> one before, too. Good looking out for the future. Yeah. You got advice and future advice. You got future advice. You're welcome. <laughs> Big spoon or little spoon? Ooh. So to eat, yes, little spoon. Also to spoon, to spoon. I want to be on the inside. So you're little... You eat off a little spoon yes. and you prefer little being and I the prefer little a little spoon. little spoon. Little spoon. And the little dipper. We have a, well, that's just the cutest damn thing I've ever heard. I had the most fun with you. I had so much fun. Thank too. you for getting in bed with me. Thank you. This is lovely. Next time someone gets in bed with me, it's going to be Katie Morton. Ooh. Yeah. Jessica doesn't know who Katie Morton is. <laughs> but you're an actor. <laughs> Katie Morton is a YouTuber, but she's also a therapist and deals a lot with mental health issues. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, Katie is wonderful. She'll be here with me next time. And if you have questions for Katie um, about anything, but specifically if you have mental health uh, related questions, or if you just want to know more about her and her work, you can leave them below. Thank you for watching. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I'm, I'm gonna hug sure. you again. A okay. second hug. Okay, a second. Two hugs. Oh my god. You now have the hug record. Thank you so for getting much. in bed. This is amazing. <laughs> Don't you dare hug anybody okay, else so now two times. We'll just okay, okay, can I, can I, I wish I brought my retainer. Yeah. <laughs>
You live in District 12. Oh. And every year, two tributes are picked to fight to the death in a game known as the Hunger Games. Huh. Uh, the day of the ceremony, your little sister's name is called. 